if I were coming to this house for the first time to meet this family, there's no way I would be ringing the doorbell. <laughs> I'd just be sitting here like this for at least 15 minutes. My favorite part about the Mongolian basalt comms, what I always tell people, is there's a story behind them. Like people think they're altered in some way, but no, that's, that's really how mother nature formed them. They all have this hexagon shape to them. So the first time I ever saw them, I instantly went to the Superman crystals. I've and you can do a hundred of them, you know, totally. put them all over the place. I've never seen a tortoise. I've never seen a tortoise. What kind of tortoise? What's a tortoise? I like turtles. Five or six. This is actually set up as a very rustic stair step for the kids to get in here. Oh, yeah, so you could step to there, then there's a step there, then if you take one Ooh. more step, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Oh, look at these guys eating grapes. So this is what you do with your old grapes. We are in St. Charles, Illinois on a bike tour today. No, <laughs> we're not on a bike tour. I'm with Brian Helfrich. Hey who's my top lieutenant in the construction department. This is the water garden capital of the world, St. Charles, that's Illinois. Right. I'm Greg Whitsock, the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitsock, the Pond Guy, and it's all about showcasing how people live the aquascape lifestyle. And if you want to talk about living the aquascape lifestyle, check this out. So believe it or not, this is a front yard water feature. Absolutely unbelievable because the entire front yard, I would say it's the second largest front yard pond we've ever built. What was so awesome about working with this family is they truly got addicted by the water gardening bug. So we, we built a water feature that came up over here and there yes. was a bridge and everything else. They led to the front door and they never anticipated how much their kids were gonna love this area. And this was not meant to be a pond with fish and everything in it. It was yes. just supposed to be a, a long meandering stream, but they instantly fell in love with the fish. So this is one thing that we always talk about. People don't think they want fish, mm -hmm. but they want fish. Everybody does. Well, what happens if we give a spot in a stream for fish to live, 100% uh, family friends gonna come over and drop a goldfish. Something's the kids are gonna, gonna get happen. a goldfish from some kind of fair or something, throw it in here, and then they survive. When we built their second pond, it was really designed way more for fish, and I can't wait to show you that one. Silver maples, what are these? These are just big sugar maples. This is a complete shade garden, and she's a gardener. And whenever we have customers who are gardeners, they add the decorations to our Christmas trees that make it look so incredible. We built this one like 10, 12 years ago, and you're gonna notice smaller rocks. There's little things that actually drive me crazy that most people wouldn't know, but not setting the rock with the, the striations moving the right way. But what I do love is this bridge. Oh my gosh. Right? And so we actually just pop out a section of concrete. You can see where the concrete pad went there. There was another one here. We saw cut it out, popped it out, found this, and then cut it to fit into place. Talk about changing your curbside appeal. It really blends in perfectly. Just imagine walking up this corner right here, and this is what greets you right outside the front door. Everybody that walks to this yard is gonna say something about this water feature. They, it's just so unexpected. So we have a big pondless reservoir down over here. It's got our pondless vault, it's got our aqua blocks, everything else. There's a neat little waterfall. Like, look at this pathway that you take and you're greeted by this. And you know how much I like to create mystery. Yes. Right, so you see this, then you're pulled to there, then you're pulled to there, and it just keeps, it like just you draws said earlier, you all the way around. Keeps drawing you and drawing All the way to the backyard where they have another water yeah. feature. So good to see you. Thanks for having us come out. I was surveying the area. We we're looking for a project, and they had an old pond that, as you know, was filled with cattails. It was. I literally walked by, and I was like, "That's our first project." There's <laughs> no way that can continue like for one more day. So, um, and it's right outside the library. It's like a nice view for the kids who are working. And so, you stopped by that day, and I was like, "Hey, we've got a project at." Right I'm like, sure. Yeah. Brian yeah. could do it. Yeah. yeah. And then he said, I'm not doing it, so I did it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, I worked my butt off. So 
We're gonna actually put a link below to the Red Wing Runner Raiders. I think the biggest thing though was I was at the same time building oh that pond God. for Logan Paul. Yes. And so we had Logan Paul give a shout out to the Red Wing Renovators. Oh my gosh. So they thought I was so dope. That I was like so the lit. biggest thing ever. I, I, I didn't even know who he was. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Now I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, my daughter knew. Okay. <laughs> so it started with the water feature in the front. Yes. We did that in 2007 and um, my dad had passed away and he was a huge outdoorsman. I grew up on a one mile shoreline lake uh -huh. and outside all the time catching frogs, turtles. I had, you know, I loved it because I built the pond in his honor. Um, and then in 2011, uh, we put the pool in and uh, we knew we were gonna be on the garden walk the next year I literally called Brian in October I, I think I gave him like a month and I said what can you do this is the amount that I have what can you do to make it look beautiful and I kind of didn't want it to waste or erode so we you found a week so that was number two Brian did such a great job because um, we trick a lot of people to think that it is one pond so everybody cannot believe it's two separate water features the way that your eye looks at the origin of it mm -hmm. it looks like it spills into both yep what do people say that come to your house for the first time because I can't imagine a single human being walking up to that front yard and you know not talking about the water feature one really interesting thing is from the street you don't know it's there at all mm -hmm. there's a big surprise and what I notice is when you walk up my pathway you hear it first yep. we are front yard people in our neighborhood we like to hang out in the front yard the kids play in the front yard and so for us it was important to share it with everybody not hide it in the backyard whether it's like the pizza guy the UPS <laughs> they they <laughs> love it pizza. it's kind of like my gift to everybody that comes to my house I'm a huge birder, and so for me, the fun of this is watching the birds take baths every day. And depending on the flow, you get different types of birds. So if it's really like a light flow, you get more hummingbirds. Sure. If it's heavier, you get a robin splashing around. How much work is the ponds versus the gardens? I would say that they're pretty much minimal. As you know, with gardening, like every season's different. Yeah. You know, like the first few years, maybe there were, every year's different with the pond. But I would say that there's, now that I've done the autofill, I would say there's pretty much zero maintenance except clearing like the dams and stuff of debris mm -hmm. or, and different things like that. Yeah, there's really not a lot of maintenance. I would say the only maintenance, especially with the pondless features, you know, the basalt columns, the slate columns, um, different things like that is just adding water, but I don't even need to do that anymore. So. Jenny, why did you decide to put this one here? I spend most of my day in my kitchen. Uh -huh. And so for me, it, whether if it's, I open the window, I can hear it for sure. If I'm at the table, I can see it for sure. And then it's up lit at night, which is nice. A lot of my friends that come to my house are overwhelmed. Like, oh, I don't have room for a pond. I always suggest the basalt column. When you walk around the yard, there's a lot of stopping points and as a gardener, your eye looks for places to stop. And even like with this tiger eye sumac, if you're by the pool, it's almost like frames the basalt column. It's all about vantage points, about vignettes, where you're going to sit, what you're going to see when you sit there and creating like unique spaces all throughout the garden. When we built this pond, Brian's like, hey, do you mind if I get some basalt rocks? I'm like, sure. You got like 50 on the edge of his <laughs> pond, the whole edge of his oh, pond. Yeah, and they all kind of go like this and water runs in between <laughs> like a waterfall. We'll show you that someday, it'll be fun. This is really spectacular. This is what you were talking about where people that come in up on the front, they think this water feature is connected to that water right. feature. She's like, I want it different than this one where this one's got more of a long meandering stream. She wanted more of like kind of a weepy wall. So we really, really spread that waterfall out. And I don't think we got really the weepy wall look, but it got something better because I love the way the water comes off of this huge rock. I mean, that's a nine foot rock and that water comes over the whole thing and then just kind of hits in different spots. A big reason for this pond is that it's deeper. I wanted to go deeper. There's a cave underneath. We just added these bubblers. When people have um, a blue heron, which is a big bird that will visit and periodically take out a fish, one of the ways to avoid that is to put bubble screens to break up the surface tension and have it kind of them hide in there. Fish caves, bubblers, sprinkler systems, sometimes either a heron decoy or what really seems to be working is uh, swan decoys. And then another big important part of this is I wanted a pathway to both my neighbor's house. 
so really close with my neighbors. Doesn't everybody wish they had a neighbor like oh this? I'd be over here all the time. <laughs> my neighbors that live in this White House, this beautiful ranch across the street, this is their pathway to their house. And then we have a young neighbor next door that likes to come over and swim, so he just walks and hops along this little path here and this comes is, to the this pool. This is what neighbors should be like. This bridge, it's even unique for us. And we do a lot of cool stuff, but what I like about it is how this stone here cantilevers out over it. So it gives it the impression that it's actually really far apart, but it's only two inches apart from this stone to this stone. That cantilevered look really also opens up the view of the water underneath. So when fish swim back and forth through here, it's just a really interesting look. And you can see how solid it is. It's not going anywhere. The reason we were able to do that is this stone actually dips back down into the soil quite a bit this way, and then this stone sits back on top of it. So it's kind of like a big dumbwaiter sitting on the back side of it and there's no way it'll fall this way. The other part I like about this pond is this waterfall. Now look at how big and wide that is. It's actually one nine foot long piece of stone. So the key when doing something like that is make sure that your pump size is big enough. The rule we use is a minimum of a thousand gallons of water per foot width. And here that's what we have because we weren't looking for a torrent or an enormous white water type look. We really wanted that to kind of drip type look over there and you can see it here in the center and then of course this is all lit up it looks incredible we've got some cantilevered stones over there we've got a spillway there a spillway over there feeding this whole thing and then the part that the homeowner loves the most is the way these two ponds look like they're connected so what we did is we set our biofall so the main filter for this pond sits here we set the water level and this stream to the same as the height of the water level of this biofall. So from down there, it actually looks like this thing splits and goes this way. But this is one system on this side, and this is one system on that side. But you were saying that maybe now we would use some bigger stone. You can see the difference in the style of this job versus the style of this job. Uh -huh. And what I mean by that is when you use the same stone a lot, you get better and better and better at using it. So you get more comfortable with your medium. Yep. And so here we were just starting to experiment yep. with weathered limestone. Here we're starting to master it. And you can see like the joints are better. The, we're getting creative with the bridges. We're getting creative with the stepping stones, knowing how the water flows over and all those other types of things. All ponds are not created equal because all artists are equal. This interface might take a couple of hours, two guys with an operator to set. So talk a little bit about pricing because this is basically uh, you know, a Ferrari front yard. Like this one over here, you can see that there's a lot more hand stacked rock. And hand stacked rock means we can usually go pretty quick because a lot of guys can just drop a rock and go, drop a rock and go, drop a rock and go. Here where we've got a lot of machine sized yes. boulders, you really have to put in your estimate to make sure that you're taking time for those rocks to be carved into place because you're not gonna take a stone like you're sitting on right now yes. and just easily drop it right into place. It might be two inches too high or two inches too low. Right. So we're constantly out here checking all that stuff. She really wanted a pathway that led her to her neighbor's yard. Yes. And so we wanted a comfortable width and a comfortable height, just like stairs. You would never see a carpenter do a nine inch stair and then a six inch <laughs> right, stair right next right, to each right. other. Well, even this little, how it little juts out right there. You're gonna wanna walk out here and feed the fish. What would you price this project at? today if you were to replicate it today in someone's yard. The, the whole, whole thing, thing $100,000. $100,000. That pool in the back is more than $100,000. That swimming pool, that is extremely nice. It's a beautiful swimming pool. People would walk in there and they'd say, yeah, it's a nice pool. Nobody's gonna walk past here and not say something. Same amount of money, actually that's a little bit more, but basically this is a Ferrari front yard water feature. You get what you pay for. That last 10%, having all of these things as an artist, it's not the paint and the canvas that you're paying for, you're paying for the artist to do the work. Any artist could say, here's some stone and I'll put it in, but it's how you put it together, right? No different yeah. than you could give me a bunch of oil paints and I'm not gonna know exactly what to do without a big canvas, but somebody that's practiced and practiced and spent a lifetime doing it is gonna shine. So obviously this is a pretty special space in her yard too, with the big pool, the pool house, the fireplace over there. But to me, what brings it to the life is the motion of the water, right? The movement right here. And I'm near and dear to this guy because I built the original one sitting over there at Aquascape out of dry stack stone. This is now made out of a fiber resin, which makes it a little easier to move and you can pick it up effortlessly over your head. But birds love this thing and lit up at night. It looks amazing because these little drops that you don't see right now actually look like silvers falling off of it at night. I always think of water feature just brings an area to life. 
So what's the story with this water feature? We had added onto our house, and at the time, this was a walkthrough, so we added a hallway, and this created like a little garden space. Yes. So at the time I was building the addition, my sister actually passed away. To honor her is, I had every person in her family, or anybody who cared about her, pick a flower, um, in her memory or plant and so all the plants you see in here are, are picked out um, by different family members and we just had a rule it had to be white baby yellow or peach which were her favorite colors mm -hmm. so anything that blooms in here you just it's just a really neutral area you got a little space right here mm -hmm. and we always say that a water feature makes a big impact on a little space right and this one's so perfect in here because anything louder would be overwhelming in this space if you want to see cool people with incredible talents with awesome water features done by the artists like comment subscribe and follow this channel so more people can see what living the aquascape lifestyle is all about